Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna be taking a closer look at the new Panasonic Lumix GH5 Mark II, this mighty little camera here. Now it's slightly different tact really from Panasonic with their GH camera announcements because it's the first time we've seen a Mark II iteration of one of their older models. So what exactly is new with this unit compared to the GH5? Well, the main headline feature, the main differentiator is that this has live streaming capabilities built straight into it. Now, before I show you that, there are some other new things, so let's see what else is new. The body design is largely the same as the original, still dust, splash, and freeze resistant. And I've always found these cameras to be pretty hardy and ready for the elements. By looks alone, you probably won't tell the difference between the GH5 and the GH5 Mark II, apart from, of course, it has the GH5 Mark II logo on the top there. However, if you look a little bit closer, you may spot some of the differences. And one of them is that the rear articulating screen has seen a slight upgrade. It's now higher in resolution. And then the battery has been swapped out for the same battery that we see in the Lumix S5. Sort of takes the same shape. It is compatible with your GH5, uh, but it's now a 2,200 milliamp hour battery, so you do get a little bit of extra juice there, which should result in longer run times. Now, although you'll get a charger with that battery as part of the camera kit, you can actually charge the battery when it's inside the camera through the USB-C port on the side here. So if you're like me and you have lots of V-Lock batteries in your kit bag, or maybe one of these smaller V-Lock batteries, a Powerbase Edge by Core, then you can literally just carry this in your kit bag, and when you're not filming, plug your USB cable, he says, into the battery, pop the other end into the camera, and then whilst I'm not shooting, I can have my camera battery being topped up and charged. But not only that, if you turn the camera on, the camera will actually run off that battery as well. So ultimately now you've got a camera rig that you can have running indefinitely. So it's gonna be perfect for if you're filming events and conferences, for example. Now this is of course a GH series camera. So it is a micro four thirds sensor right in the heart of it. It's actually the same sensor that's found in the GH5, 20.3 megapixels. Now it is slightly different in the sense that it does have a AR coating on the front there, which does squeeze out an extra one third of a stop of dynamic range. Now that sensor is stabilized. The first GH5 Mark I, you had five stops of dual image stabilization. In the Mark II, you've got 6.5 stops, which is absolutely fantastic. Now the real big updates of this camera are found on the inside. Now the photography side of things is pretty much exactly the same. So I'm not really gonna to touch upon that at all because if you're interested in that, then just go look at the heaps of content out there that's on the GH5 already. However, the video recording specs have seen a welcome upgrade. This camera can now record in UHD and Cine 4K in 30 frames a second in 10-bit 422 or 60 frames a second in 10-bit 420, both internally and without any recording time limits. So again, couple that with the USB-C power, so you can power the camera indefinitely, you can also record indefinitely too. And unlike the GH5 at launch, the GH5 Mark II will come with Vlog L pre-installed. And you will also find Cine D2 and Cine V2 there as well within your picture profiles. There was a 6K anamorphic recording mode on the GH5, and of course, that has also found its way into the Mark II. But this has now been supplemented with a new 10-bit 4K mode at up to 50 frames a second. These cameras are an incredibly affordable way to get into shooting anamorphic. And when I say shooting anamorphic, I mean shooting with proper anamorphic glass, not anamorphic adapters that are designed to work on 16 by nine sensors. And the real benefits of why you'd wanna use these cameras for that is because one, they're largely inexpensive in the land of cameras, but two, it's all about the sensor size, micro four thirds. It is natively an aspect ratio of four three. So when you're shooting anamorphic in four three and de-squeezing it, it's the only real mode on this camera where you are utilizing the full sensor. Of course, when you're shooting in 16.9 or 17.9, you're actually losing a little bit of the top and the bottom to give you that aspect ratio on the sensor. So you're really getting more out of this camera if you're shooting in anamorphic. 
There's also now a VFR mode for both UHD and Cine 4K that can vary from 2 to 60 frames a second, conforming that footage up to 30 frames a second in playback. Now the HD options are still present of course, allowing you to shoot up to 180 frames a second, and again there is no cropping in on that sensor as you jump up in frame rate. And as there are now many more shooting modes within this camera, the same filtering system that we found on the likes of the S5, which is what I'm shooting this piece of camera with now, has made it into this camera. In terms of AF, it still is, of course, a contrast-based system, and it takes the latest iteration of the backend that's found in the likes of the S5, which does work rather well. This time, though, they've added head, body, and animal recognition to the Mark II. So live streaming, the key differentiator between this camera and any other of the previous GH series cameras from Panasonic Lumix. Now, from launch, this camera will support RTMP streaming, RTMP is probably the most widely adopted streaming protocol. So if you're going to the likes of YouTube, Facebook, 99% of the platforms out there will ask you to send them RTMP. And that's what this camera can do without any other additional bits of kit. This camera has Wi-Fi built into it, which supports both 2.4 and 5 gig networks. It's simply a case of connecting to an available wireless network, picking an encoding profile, and then we can manually type in our stream URL and our stream key the details that we would get from our live platform. And then we can hit go live. I am not oblivious to the fact that typing in a stream URL and stream key on a device like a camera like this is not the most enjoyable of experiences. It's doable, but it's not something that you wanna be doing all of the time. You can actually just use the Lumix Sync app available on both Android and iOS, and you can connect to the camera via Bluetooth to your phone and then you can obviously just type in all of those details remotely and it does make it a lot easier to manage. Now within that app as well, you actually have Facebook and YouTube integrated straight within it. So all you need to do is log into your account and then you can literally create a title for your live stream, add the description, save it, it will update those settings to the camera and then you can hit stream and it will automatically push that and then make it live on Facebook for you. So what this is actually doing is my phone's connecting to the camera and relaying all those settings via Bluetooth. And then once those settings have been relayed over, when I hit trigger to start streaming, the camera is then relying on the Wi-Fi network that it connected to earlier. Now, this Wi-Fi network could be the Wi-Fi network here in this office, or actually it could be the personal hotspot on my smartphone. You know, considering the size and weight of this thing, it's a pretty powerful proposition, you know? The camera itself isn't that big, it isn't too expensive, it's got really, really good image stabilization there, so going out and about shooting handheld is not gonna be a problem. You've got very robust codecs on board, and of course you can live stream. So, you know, if you are the modern content creator, let's say you're doing lots of bits for social, potentially you're, you know, one of those people that's always live streaming on your phone when you're out and about, you know, you can just bring this camera along, you don't need anything else, and you can instantly upgrade your live stream output by not using your phone camera and using something that is, you know, way better. Let's not, <laughs> let's not uh, beat around the bush. It's gonna be <laughs> miles better than your, than your phone's camera. So I hope you found this video useful, guys. If you have, then please hit that like or subscribe button. That would make my day. And if you do have any questions, please do just put them in the comments below and I will get back to you. I obviously have a unit right here in front of me. So if I don't know the answer, I will test it and find out for you. If you want to find out some more information, just head over to the Holden website. Thank you very much for watching.